right, let's get this started. So I may need to go lower. Good morning, how's everyone doing? Can you hear me okay? Let's see. Oh, thank you. Etsy, I'll post a link later, Selena. Um, but yeah, it's uh, based off of Matisse painting. Where are you guys checking in from? Morning everybody, just getting the video set up. I've actually never done a live before, so be patient with me as I figure it out. I'm just recording on my phone. Um, okay, good morning from Colorado, all right. I'm out in Florida, so I'm out in a Jacksonville, Florida right now, just south of Georgia. North Carolina, East Coast. We got another New York. Delaware, all right, my East Coast representing. <laughs> Is it Yoli? Yoli, I'm originally from California too. Love it out there. What part are you from? <laughs> Tim, I practiced a little bit. <laughs> All right. We'll just wait a few more minutes um, for more people to log on. Um, we'll just chat for a bit. California, more Californians. Awesome. California is a big state. You guys are all in lockdown right now, right? <laughs> OC. All right. North Central Florida, Florida. Yep, I'm in Jacksonville. Joe. Hi, Petra from Germany. So happy you could join us. Okay. Let's do about two more minutes and then I'll get started with some instruction, okay? This is so exciting and fun, you guys. You'll have to excuse me squinting too. My The sun's like right in my eyes and I have a curtain here, but I'm not, um, I don't know, the sun just picked a weird spot today. <laughs> Hi Stacy, thanks so much for getting this together. It's gonna be so fun. All right, please let me know if you guys can't hear me or can't see anything. I can read your comments, okay. Um, more North Carolina, Alabama. Awesome, you guys are from all over, this is so fun. Canada, welcome Gail. <laughs> yeah, and I've been loving watching everyone else's video. Yes, the GR Pottery Forum, we'll talk about that. Tennessee, Pismo Beach. Awesome, you guys can see okay. Yeah, I really love, so this is my sunroom in my house. Um, it's just a bungalow we're renting out here in Florida. Um, and I turned the extra sunroom into my studio so the lighting is amazing. It's so fun. Great, so glad you guys can see and hear okay. Vegas, awesome, okay. Well, let's, let's get started. Just a quick introduction from me. My name's Jamie Mateer. Um, Mateer is pronounced like musketeer without the us, kind of a strange last name. Um, I'm out in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, my husband is a military physician, so we travel a lot um, and he works on base. So, and I work from home. So I have an in-home studio. That's my, like I said before, the, my third bedroom, that's a sunroom. And I have a kiln and a wheel out in my garage. Um, oh, hi from Georgia! Yay! Good morning, everybody, if you're just checking in. Um, so, um, a little bit 
more about me. So I um, started my art career only about seven years ago after I had my first um, son, a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. So they may sneak in and say hi. They're watching uh, Spider-Man right now, so hopefully they won't interrupt. Um, but um, so I'm mostly at home with my boys. Um, and I just sneak in studio time when I can. Um, I've only been teaching for about six months. Um, I was originally um, a painter for about six years. And then I picked up ceramics about four or five years ago. Um, and it was like, I, it was like meeting my soulmate. And I'm sure some of you have felt the same in doing other art forms than picking up ceramics. It's it's so different from any other art form I've done before. But I absolutely am in love with it. And it feels like the, the language I've always been meant to speak. So I haven't been able to put it down. Yeah, Lisa, right? Um, so today, um, we are going to be learning about sgraffito. So sgraffito is an Italian art form. Um, that means to scratch. Sgraffito means to scratch. Um, it's where you're essentially scratching the surface of your ceramics um, with a needle tool or anything else to reveal the clay body underneath. So often utilizes under glazes um, and gobes. Um, you can use slip too to add contrast or whatever you want to your clay body. So this, um, the clay I'm using today um, awesome, seeing it where everyone's checking in from too. Awesome. Painter de clay. All right, Karen. Um, so the clay body I'm using, it's called Miller WC617. I don't know anyone else that uses this clay body, but it's a cone 5.6, so it's mid-fire clay. Um, and it's a porcelain clay that has a lot of ball and grolic, so it's awesome for hand building, which is weird for porcelain, right? Porcelain can be really finicky. But I've used this clay on the wheel, but I actually really love hand building with it because I have to work pretty quickly and very efficiently. But the results when I scurfido have that nice white bright without being um, like the frost porcelain. It's, it's not translucent at all. It's really, really solid. Um, so I order my clay directly from Laguna or Axner. Um, I just started working with my local um, pottery supply store to have them order it directly so I can just pick it up instead of, you know, paying the $40 in shipping because it's insane, right? Um, but yeah, most, most of what I've been doing lately is hand building. So I, um, I do a lot of mugs. I use, um, the GR pottery forms, little plug for GR pottery. Um, the piece we're going to be working on today, you can see it's a platter. This is the form I used for it. So you kind of press it in, let it sit. I add feet and stuff. Um, we won't go into too much detail about like my hand building process. That's not really what I want to focus on. If you do have questions at the end. Um, Joe, yes. Yeah, I go to Atlantic Pottery Supply. Paul, Paul's super, super helpful and great out there. Um, but here's an example of what it looks like when it's all fired and finished. Let's see if it can focus. One second. So this is, oh, it's super overexposed. So this is, after it's been fired and carved. Um, so you can kind of see what it would look like. So these are butterflies, um, all that good stuff. Some more examples of um, some of my work so you can get an idea of what we're gonna be doing. Um, here is a mug. The lighting's not great if I get close. It's a anatomical heart. Like I said before, my husband's a physician, so I made this for him. Um, I tend to do a lot of black and white too. I just really love the contrast. Um, but occasionally I will add color. So like this piece, this is just bisquare, recently got fired. Um, I made the snake green. The eyes are red, but everything else is just black and white. So, okay. Let me open this up too or show you guys the difference. So you can kind of see how much this clay shrinks too. So this is just bisque fired and this is after a glaze firing and see, this is from the same pattern or the template I use for my mugs. So, okay, glad the close-ups are looking okay. I feel like it's really overexposed over here, but maybe it's just cause I'm getting too close. There you go. Okay. And here's my, uh, my current magnum opus. This is a cicada platter. 
with moon phases. So, anyone, so did anyone else losing audio? You guys okay? Thank you, Petra. Okay, so this is, again, this is a bisquare. Um, I usually just do a clear glaze over it and fire it again, and it's food safe, it's really great. So this is also made with a GR pottery form. I will roll out a slab and then lay it on top of my form, um, kind of press it down, let it sit for just a few minutes, because again, this is porcelain. Um, thank you, Stacy. Um, this porcelain, it dries pretty fast, so I have you have to work at a pretty good pace, um, which is perfect for me, because again, I have, I have small kids, I get interrupted a lot, so just, I get working as fast as I can, but if, um, yeah, Ellen, I think when we uh, post the video again, um, we'll have closed captionings. So all, all audio's fine. Okay. All right. So yeah, so just a clear glaze, then I'll add the foot afterwards. And then here is the um, kind of the big tip with this clay. I do not carve my porcelain until it is bone dry, um, which will be completely different. If you use any other clay body, um, I would say except for porcelain you do at the like just past leather hard stage for scraffito and carving. Um, yes, Carol, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, so a little bit about all the other tools I'll be using today and then I'll get um, going on my process. So I showed you the forms. So I use these forms for when I'm build, hand building um, my bodies, like the, the pieces themselves. Um, other tools that are helpful, I use just a dish scrubby, and I actually use this to, so this is, um, this is greenware, it's bone dry, um, I use this to kind of sand it down. So the porcelain is so fine that um, adding water back to it in any form other than like the underglaze can make it start to fall apart. I've lost many, many mugs by adding, um, by adding the underglaze too fast or too thickly or trying to clean it up with like a damp sponge. It's just, um, it's kind of a tricky game. You figure out from practice, like all things ceramic, right? Um, just practice, practice, practice. You'll figure out how the, what the language the clay speaks, right? How you need to treat it. Um, in terms of, um, sorry, trying to answer your questions. I do wear a mask. Thank you. These are in high demand right now, but I bought them back in January for like $7 for a pack of 100, and they now go for like $75 for a pack of 100. So I feel like I'm like holding on to gold right here, but I reuse the same ones over and over again. I'm actually gonna donate my extra masks um, to a local hospital right now. I hope everyone's staying healthy too. Um, but back, back to the scrub, yes. Wear a mask when you are carving and you are sanding or doing anything with this clay. It has a lot of silica in it and it can hurt your lungs, like a lot of things in clay. Um, but back to the warping, um, I always make sure to add a foot. If I add a foot and dry it slowly. So as soon as I have added the foot, I will cover it in a layer of um, just like plastic from the laundromat and let it sit for about a week. Um, occasionally I'll come in and kind of like let it air out a little bit so it's not collecting condensation. And for the most part, I haven't had a huge issue with warping. I have lost a few pieces to warping, but it's just a matter of slowing down the drying time. Um, so no, my clay is not black, it is white. It's a white porcelain, so you can see in here. Um, hi Lisa, sorry, thanks for checking in. Um, and then I add black underlay. So I'm gonna finish going through my tools real quick and then I'll talk about Facebook is overloaded with people staying home. Oh no, oh sorry, I thought my connection lost. Can you guys hear me okay? Am I back on? I'll wait a second. It disappeared for a second for me too. Facebook Live is funny. Okay, frozen, paused. Give me a minute. Thanks, Stacey. I'll be back. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Needle tools. So I use my fine needle tool. It's the Kemper K21 with a side on the back. And then my just my thicker normal needle tool, the kind you use for like when you're throwing. Um, this is mostly what I carve with. The other options, if I'm doing a larger piece that requires a lot of, um, a lot of underglaze to get scooped off or a lot of big carving, 
my husband bought me these really cool carving tools. They're just XCM tools. They have a bunch of different heads. They're essentially, honestly guys, these are just um, like dental tools. That's like literally what they are. Like the ends look just like what you would see at a dentist. So these are great. Um, I'm a close for Laura back. So I, Milo, I use the Jet Black and I haven't had a problem with it. So I wonder if it's another issue. Let's, um, we, maybe we can talk at the end about like what issues you guys have run into with underglazes and whatnot. And I'll just tell you what, uh, tell you what I, I use. Cause I know sometimes it can be dependent on the type of kiln you're using or, um, if you're load, if it's a really full load. But honestly, I've, I haven't had any issues with the jet black sticking to my kiln shelves at all. Um, I don't know. I also don't apply very thickly. Um, so speaking of application, brushes are important. I love goat hair brushes. Um, someone knocked on my door, but they can wait. Um, hey, Griffin. Okay, sorry, someone was at my door. I think it was the mail. <laughs> So I use goat hair brushes. This is, uh, I fell in love with goat hair brushes after doing watercolor for a long time. Um, and they just hold the water and the underglaze really, really well. So application goes on much more smoothly for me. Um, and then I use a stiff brush and this is what I use for brushing off all the dust and stuff as I'm carving. Also, while you're carving, mask. While you are carving, while you're sanding, doing anything, please, please, please wear a mask. I use this and then I usually actually leave my door open. Um, the door to my studio is actually just right over here. And then I have an air filter on at the same time. So uh, today I will just talk really loud through my mask um, for safety reasoning. Um, sorry, Milo, I'm trying to read your comment real quick. Yeah, maybe it's the application, just if it's too thick. Um, Cause yeah, this is what I use. I use Amico Velvet Underglaze um, in Jet Black. Just this is the big 16 ounce. Shake it really well. Um, when I apply to, I will let it dry really, really well between each coat. So I'll, I'll layer, um, and I don't add any water to this or anything. I just get this, you know, a brush loaded really, really well, brush it all over, let it dry, come back and brush it one more time. And then I'll do little tip like touch-ups because occasionally there'll be like a little bubble or something that didn't get all the way through. Um, so I'm going to put on my mask real quick and just show you how I kind of sand my greenware down. So this is prepping the surface for the underglaze essentially. Um, and then we'll actually take a pause from this and I'm going to go straight into my platter that you can see underneath your comments. Um, so this is good because we can see if you can hear me. You guys can hear me okay still? Thumbs up, thumbs down. No, you can't hear me at all. Um, so I actually went to college for theater and speech education. So I have a pretty good projecting voice. If you can't hear me, just let me know. Let me move this to the side real quick. So, so this is your greenware. Awesome, glad you guys can hear. So this is greenware, it's bone dry right now. Um, I take the scrubby and you can see there's kind of just, you know, just minor imperfections from the sponge, from the building process. Um, this will kind of smooth everything out. Like if you were on the wheel, you know, in trimming, or if you were just hand building, normally you just use like a damp sponge on a different clay body. With the porcelain, I really just don't touch it until it's bone dry again. It's just so, so finicky. Oh, hello from Scotland. Thank you for joining us. And I'll just lightly brush all the edges and the clay surface where the underglaze is gonna be going on. So you can see it's, it's actually taking off quite a bit and that's just dust, I'm barely pushing it all. So I have my mask on and then I'm using my stiff brush and just brushing it off. So I'm just kind of barely, barely scratching the surface it's like a very, very gentle sanding process. And my speakers are off and you can still hear you. <laughs> awesome, maybe you're my next door neighbor in Florida. 
Hi from Belgium. If you're considered sanding over a large bowl of water, catch. I have done that before. I don't have a huge uh, workspace. Um, this is literally just a, like my table right now is actually a piece of marble I found on the side of the road <laughs> over an old table. And then um, I use just plywood for my throwing table or for my like a uh, slab table. Um, but that's actually a really good idea. Um, to just do it over water. I have a bowl right here. Thanks for the suggestion. That's really smart. Who is that from again? Corey, thanks. That's a great suggestion. I'm going to do that right now. Here I am making a big mess. Okay. So I'm going to sand the back real quick. And you can, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see all the dust that's just coming off just from rubbing it gently. Again, this is why I, I work on the porcelain while it is dry. While it is wet, it just turns into goop. Um, I don't know, porcelain is so funny and this porcelain body is different than other porcelains I've worked with as well that have like raku porcelain with tons of grog or anything like that. This is just so, so fine, but holds its form really, really well. Okay, so kind of brushed it off. And then I'll just show you how, I'll just apply one layer on this and then we'll move on to the, um, the actual scraffito, okay? <laughs> Thank God, it's awesome, right? My tabletop, it works great. Um, and hello from Wales. Okay, so shake up your underglaze real quick. You can also use slip and engo, but I have not worked with engo myself. I actually don't know the difference between underglaze and engo. I'm gonna take this off too, because there's, not as much dust. <laughs> Corey, it's fine. I have a spray bottle right here and I just have a sponge that I use for damp stuff anyway, so it'll sit in the bowl. I really appreciate the suggestion though because I get dust everywhere, it's a mess. Okay, so shake up your underglaze or if you're using slip, same process, shake it up real good. I'm going to load up my brush really well and see how it's, it's heavy, but it's going to go on pretty nicely. And I'm just following the curves of my clay, brushing it on, not, not forcing it or pushing it in. You can see how it's already starting to dry. Porcelain is thirsty. I'm sure if anyone uh, throws on the wheel with porcelain, I'm sure you know that. You're just like, did I not just like dump a bucket of water on this? And it's still, <laughs> it's drying out. Okay. So you can see kind of the differences in uh... <laughs> porcelain be thirsty. You hear me. Um, you can see the difference how it's starting to get kind of matte. It's not shiny anymore, so that means it's dry, um, but there's still parts that are still a little bit shiny. So I'm gonna wait until all of that is all dull before I add another coat on. Um, the thing about adding um, underglaze and other things um, to dry bisqueware is if you add too much water too fast, what's gonna happen? It's gonna start falling apart you're stressing it out, adding water back into it. So I just do one coat, let it dry as much as it can before I add another coat, and then I'll let that dry all the way um, before I start carving. I usually do about two coats. Um, I do not thin the underglaze. Um, I use it just as is from Amico. I, I haven't, the only other underglaze I've used is Speedball, um, which honestly I'm not a big fan of. Um, I just don't really care for their underglazes. It doesn't brush on like I like it to and get really chunky. And honestly, it's just not that good of quality. So I, I appreciate Amico's um, quality. It brushes on wonderfully um, and the colors come out really great. Um, yeah, yeah, so this is, this is greenware. It's, it's just completely dry um, porcelain that I made last week and I just let it dry on my shelf and now I'm adding underglaze. So you can see now, it's kind of like a charcoaly gray because it's dry. So I'll add another coat right now. I'm kind of like when you're glazing a piece before glaze firing, I try to kind of add the underglaze the opposite direction that I brushed on. So it kind of gets in all those nooks and crannies because 
we all know like clay can be really porous um, or just you get little like pinhole pinholes and stuff so this time I am kind of moving my brush around to get in all the little little dots and bits and stuff okay so wet again let that dry um, but that's the basically the process I use for applying um, my underglaze yes I love Amico velvets so set that aside okay bottle this back up um something I do do because this is greenware it hasn't been fired yet I will leave the um underglaze nearby because inevitably there's like a slip up or I scratch the surface of the um of the clay and I need to touch up and um, I'll use just a fine watercolor brush and kind of clean up any edges or any scratches I made. Um, <laughs> yeah, Linda, welcome to my studio. I'm so glad you guys are, are here checking in. This is so fun. It's a little surreal. I haven't taught classes in a while. I haven't taught classes because of this virus that's been going around everyone's been getting sick and I have I have a lot of older students too I live in Florida there's a large retirement community it's just like really risky to teach um, okay so this is how I go about designing my pieces and then transferring the design to my pieces that I have underglaze on them so here's a piece this is what we're gonna be working on today this platter um, so a few white spots on it, it's fine um, and it's already it's dry I already added two I think maybe two or three maybe three layers of underglaze I haven't noticed a huge difference between two or three layers um, besides two layers almost comes out more like a really really dark burnt umber so you can get a little bit of browns showing up which I actually like um, but if you want the jet jet black I would recommend going for three it just takes more time to apply you have to wait till it's completely dry before you add the next one again because you don't want to stress your greenware out um so when i go about designing my pieces i will sketch a just a basic design so here i've sketched kind of the basic size of the platter um and this is a snake with some flowers so um i'm kind of uh just just a really rough sketch how i want the snake's design to go kind of the general area of what I want the flower where I want the flowers to be um, and then once I have a sketch sorry a design then I will go back to my piece Hold on. so I have my piece here also quick side note sorry I'm getting distracted um, I always lay my greenware when I'm carving it on a piece of foam this frat this uh this porcelain can get really fragile and so when you're pushing on it or like um putting any kind of pressure on it 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 can snap really easily <laughs> so it's kind of fragile so i'm always laying it down on a piece of foam with just a like a towel over it so that catches the dust too um and then keeps my foam clean for other pieces and you know i can switch between clay bodies that way too so I'm laying my greenware on, let me turn it sideways, on my foam with a towel. Um, and then I take a piece of tracing paper, okay? And I'm actually, I laid it onto my, uh, my greenware piece that I've already added underglaze to. Um, and then I just use a pencil that I can't find. Here we go. And I just kind of sketch the body of of the clay so I've already done that you can see this is this is the carving surface this is the main flat part of my um, of my scraffito piece so and then from there I'll go back to my sketch um, and trace over that so you can see here's the original sketch this is the sketch with tracing paper and just the general outline of the snake and then the center of the flowers that I want to do now, a lot of the time, if I'm doing um, something that's a little more, uh, what's the right word? Like vertical, not three-dimensional, because obviously it's all three-dimensional, like a mug. 
This mug is, has a similar, I will sketch it out. Here's actually the sketch for this one. So I have a sketch snake, one flower, and then I'll wrap it around like that. Um, but honestly guys, for the most part, I just freehand it on. Um, Cause it's just one more extra step. Again, like I said before, like I have a background in, in painting, a little bit of illustration work. Um, so for me, it feels almost a little more natural to just sketch directly onto my piece. Um, but if you don't feel confident in your sketching abilities or your drawing abilities, I definitely recommend sketching it out on paper first, then using the tracing paper to help you out. And so this is how you use the tracing paper from here. So I'm laying it back onto my piece. Can you guys see or are the comments in the way? Let me move this a little bit. Lost sound, can you hear me okay? Yeah, Karen. I feel like I can get a better idea for the, um just the composition on the body of it when I just freehand sketch right onto the piece, right? Because um, inevitably there are there are curves and, and dimensions that I can't replicate just on paper, right? Um, Debbie, you too. Yeah. Okay, so I have my tracing paper with my sketch on it. I'm laying it back down on the body, kind of lining up those lines. Again, you can see the lines just follow the curve of the edge of the piece. I don't know if that made any sense. Um, let me know if you guys have questions. <laughs> and then I will take a, it's kind of a dull pencil. It's not sharp because otherwise you're gonna pierce right through. Um, and I will gently press. Actually, it's not gently. It's firm, but it's not hard enough that you're gonna break the tracing paper. Um, you let the, Karen, you let the clay tell you what to draw. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, okay, so now I'm just sketching onto my clay body. So I'm just following the basic outline. I can press a little harder. You can lift up your tracing paper to see if it's actually going through. I had one student suggest to see, are, do you ever have students that are just like, why are you so much smarter than me? Aren't I the teacher? <laughs> Lee, yes, we're doing Scraffito. Um, so this is Scraffito. Just real quick, for people who are just turning in, this is Scraffito on porcelain. It's a white porcelain clay body that I use for hand building, believe it or not. Um, I wait for it to get bone dry, add two or three layers of black underglaze, drying between each coat, and then I sketch on a design before I carve. So right now I'm sketching on the design, and then we'll start carving, okay? So... Right now I'm just I'm just pressing the image essentially into the clay. Going back and forth over my lines. Sorry, what I was saying about a um a student I had, they were saying, "Oh, couldn't you, you know, like when you sketch on paper before you add it to a canvas, can you sketch it out, add a little graphite and then like lay the like the sketch design onto it yourself and then scratch it in so the 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 graphite actually stays on i haven't noticed a huge difference the biggest thing you want right now is like a very very slight indentation as you're tracing your image um and that's that's again why i kind of prefer to sketch directly onto my piece because i i can sketch it out pause really important. The graphite will burn away in the kiln. So you can literally cover your whole piece with pencil marks and they will disappear when you fire it. Um, so don't, don't worry about anything being super, super precise on your, on your piece because after you've carved it and your white image is left, all those little sketches and nicks and marks, they're going to disappear. It's kind of nice. So my kids love Scraffito. Awesome. It's just really fun. Um, for those of you that don't work in porcelain, you can do all this entire process exactly the same on leather hard clay. So I've, I've worked with um, like a bee mix, a Laguna bee mix, and um, actually there's a, a clay called Elizabeth Speckle. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, and then um, I'll just wait for it to get leather hard and do the same process. It'll wait till it's leather hard, 
add one or two coats or two to three coats of the underglaze drying between each coat um, and then carve from there and it's like it's more like carving butter it's a more um it's just a kind of a different experience this I feel like I, I like the contrast of the white porcelain um, and I like the the feel of the clay body personally like I think I think it just fits my my style more but you can do everything I'm doing on leather hard clay um, uh, Melissa do you ever draw your design on with a white or red pencil I'm not I thought about that with just like a white like a Crayola pencil I mean usually I just sketch on with with my pencil and I can see it clearly enough um, this this process right now is more to show people that maybe aren't as confident in their sketching skills um, how to get the image that they want onto their clay body okay so I'm just gonna sketch for a minute I don't know if you can I don't know if you'll be able to see it but we'll see there's just a very very maybe you can see it it's so subtle <laughs> um the snake's image from right here so i think i'm actually just gonna go straight with my pencil now um don't use chalk one time i did and left an image oh maybe the talc yeah um joe yeah elizabeth specs like the best for hand building i do a lot of um i'll do vases and stuff with it all the time i like how it fires with a white underglaze too the speckles pop up through the underglaze it's really cool okay so I'm just going to use my small sketching abilities now. I can get kind of more natural lines too when I sketch this way. So where's... you hear me sketching <laughs> um, for anyone that's just tuning in um, we are doing scurfito pottery and I'm currently sketching my image onto the underglazed piece you can use slip you can use and gobe and gobe is that how you pronounce it um her camera's like looking into the mirror <laughs> i'm right-handed but it looks like i'm using my left hand huh how <laughs> strange <sighs> videos are weird okay where am i going with this Okay, for whatever reason, I do not like to sketch my flowers out too, usually because they have a lot of detail. That's something else when you're scratching your, um, or sketching out your scraffito. Um, on the surface, you can kind of leave it as simple or as detailed as you want. If you need more guidelines um, or more, more things sketched out to help you visually when you're carving, go for it. Again, I just use a normal, this pencil's from Staples, super classy um to get whatever image I need if I'm doing circular pieces like this one again um I will oftentimes kind of measure everything out so it has it's very very even on everything um but with more artistic platters like this I kind of just go for it um are the comments in the way of my plate right now do I need to move up a little bit I see okay Trying to see what I'm sketching. So I got my snake image. Okay. Um, and what I will do with the snake too is I'll probably end up uh, doing all the scales, but I'll I'll stop before that point. I actually do not know what time it is right now. No, don't move. Okay, I won't move. <laughs> closer is better. You guys can see if I'm right here. Come a little closer. Can you 
and swipe the icons on the bottom, click the magic wand, and then click the rectangle icon. Ooh. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what to click, but it's okay. What time is it? It is 11.35. Awesome. Guys, this is great. Closer is better. Comments are not in the way. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the feedback. <laughs> okay. So I have my snake image right now. I will go ahead and add just minor, minor details. The eyes. And then referring back to that and my sketch where I want the flowers to be. So I love peonies. So I will just, I'm just gonna draw a circle right now of where I want um, the peonies to be. Patty, how do you erase if you make a huge mistake or change your mind? Um, you can, I just use an eraser um, for now. And again, the graphite will burn off in the kiln. So before I even start carving, I kind of um, finalize which lines I want to carve. Cause I'm not carving right now, I'm just sketching on the surface. Um, thanks Debbie. Um, questions? Yeah, so if I do carve and I make a big mistake, um, mm, sometimes I will add underglaze back over it if it's like a really, really big one. I worked really hard on it, but sometimes if the car, if I've carved out too much, um, we'll get, we'll get to that. It's kind of, it's up to your discretion, really, if you want to try to cover it up or just just rub it. Yeah, if you're using pencil, you can just rub it out. Just, see, I just erased part of it right there. See, snake. Okay, so I'm gonna just do the circles for my flower, like the centers of my flowers, so I can kind of get, get the composition I want. Um, just kind of general rule of thumb with composition too is odd odd numbers are visually a little more pleasing. So my snake has three kind of loop-de-loops. Um, one, two, three, I'm gonna add, I think seven peonies. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I just have the center of the peonies and little dots. Just brush another layer of underglaze. That works really well with dark underglazes, like the black can totally cover up. I've used some lighter colored underglazes, like a yellow before. Um, and for whatever reason, like if there's still pencil on the surface, it gets really like muddy and weird. I don't know if I'm, I did something wrong. Like if you have to clean it off. Corey, thank you. Thanks. I realized as watching everyone's videos, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm probably like the least, <laughs> the youngest and least experienced of everyone. But I really, really love this process and I have not seen a lot of other artists do it. So thought I'd teach and share. Okay, so um, for the sake of time and because, uh, because experience, if you wanna sketch out your entire piece, go for it. Sketch out the entire piece if you need those guidelines. I am fine just going for it. So. I have my Kemper tool now with the needle. I'm gonna put my mask back on, right? Cause you don't wanna inhale the clay, clay dust. Um, and then I use my, you can use a dry goat hair brush or a stiffer, this is just like a hardware store brush for like 50 cents or something. The goat hair is a little more gentle on the surface, especially if you have a lot of fine lines. Um, um, yeah, so I'm gonna start carving. Feel free to keep asking questions when, um, when I go to start carving, I'm doing the smallest needle and the lightest brush strokes first. So as I'm going over, I'm not gouging out pieces at all because again, this is a fragile surface. Uh, greenware porcelain is it's touchy. It needs love and tender care. So when I go to carve, actually I'm gonna start on the flower. I'm just doing scratch, 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 scratch. Um, I'm not doing scrap, like big lines or anything. You have a higher chance of um, getting big burrs or the, the surface of the clay flaking um, and not going where you want it to go. <laughs> thank you, Stacy, <laughs> And thank you, Hannah and Debbie. I appreciate you guys a lot. Um, so just to remember when you're, you're scratching the surface, you're not... Um, 
you're not gouging it you're not you're not even technically carving 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 you know when you're taking out big chunks of clay like you would if you were doing um like leather hard clay remember this is bone dry clay you're just you got to scratch the surface to reveal the clay body underneath so i'm going to get the center of my peony started you guys can see what it will look like so i'm going back and i'm brushing it off and away okay so we're starting it's already like tons of contrast right there right you can pinch your screen to close oh can i oh i didn't know i could do that wow okay <laughs> You guys can see okay? Would it be better if I did it at, like, sat at an angle? I'll, I'll come away and, and bring it back up to the surface so you can keep checking in and seeing it. Again, ask me questions as I'm doing this because this, this is probably the most tedious, um, time-consuming part of the whole process. Like most things in ceramics, there's just a huge, long, time-consuming process, right? But the results are totally worth it. Take your time while you're sketching. You know, your, your clay's not gonna get any drier than it is right now. <laughs> yeah, so close up real quick of my carving tools. So I have a Kemper tool. Sorry, I put a, like a, like one of those pencil squeezy things um, for my fingers, but usually this is just a solid wood piece. It's a fine needle tool with like a scythe or a hook on the back. Kemper tool, K21. Um, when we post this again on the page or if I post it on my page, I'll have like a list of my supplies. Okay. Magic screen. <laughs> wow. Um, I use just a goat hair brush. That's actually pretty soft. Um, if I'm doing bigger, like carving up a lot and creating a lot of dust, I use just a, like a pretty stiff, cheap brush from the hardware store. But I feel like the soft brush almost scoops up more of the fine dust um, a little bit better because the dust is really fine, um, which is why I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> if I have bad eye problems or something, maybe I'd be wearing goggles too. Okay. Again, I'm, I'm coming to the clay surface with the intention to scratch it. I'm not making any lines longer than, honestly, longer than less than a quarter inch, like quarter inch tops for the longest line you're going to make with this before you lift up and come at it again okay because the longer you're pushing on this clay surface the longer you're stressing it out and it, it can kind of um it just it it doesn't pick up the clay like you want it to so you can kind of hear the scratching noise too it might irritate some people I realize And every few seconds, I'm just coming back at it to brush it off so this dust gets out of my way so I can see the image clearly, okay? Um, you know, if it gets really, really dusty um, and that dust, um, so this, this is why it's important to wait till your underglaze is bone dry before you come back at it with, um, with the brush. Because if you, um, if it's still like even the tiniest bit damp and you're adding dust back to it, it'll dull it a lot. Um, quick example, I like nicked up a piece right here on this piece. You can see how it's almost just like more white than the rest of the piece. Um, that's because I added underglaze back over this and was dusting off something else over here and it just got mixed in and made it like dusty and dirty. So, um, yeah, try to wait until your piece is dry before you start carving it. And the dust shouldn't cause a problem in terms of the color and the contrast. Um, when you're all done with your piece, everything's been carved, I, I would take like the stiffer brush and just brush it some more to make sure it all gets off. 
Um, Jessica, yes, I traced with a pencil first. So you can see the pencil marks on here. Um, anything that's left over will get burned out in the kiln. Okay. Um, for those of you that are, are new to Scraffito or maybe don't feel confident in your like sketching or image making ability, um, I would start with simple stuff like just lines. Like try doing Scraffito and just doing lines over the whole thing or like a grid pattern or um, carving little circles. Just really, really simple designs. And as you get more confident in your sketching and imagery or image making and illustration capabilities, then move on to other stuff. Um, something else I will do is, um, what was I gonna say? Something else I'll do is I, I do a lot of bug carvings, um, like the cicada or the, like the butterflies here. Um, I will open up like a, like a zoology book or one of the, you know, those science books that are just devoted to butterflies and stuff and just trace the image directly on tracing paper and then bring that to the clay. So, um, <laughs> Corey, <laughs> thank you, Corey. See, I'm in a habit now of just dusting it off into the air. This is great. Listen to, uh, Corey had the great idea and recommendation to have a bowl of water on hand. I just have a bowl with like a damp sponge in it, so it'll still catch all the clay. So when I'm brushing off, I'll just brush it straight into the bowl and therefore it is not all over my table and getting everything else. Awesome. What else did he say? <laughs> okay, we'll say it again. I hear ya, I hear ya. How much pressure are you putting on the rim with your right forearm? Do you need to worry about stressing the rim on bone dry or the hard pieces? Yes, so um, that's why I have it on a piece of foam. So this foam right here is protecting against the surface. So I can put some pressure on this piece and it's not adding a ton of stress on the bottom. Um, and whenever I'm pushing on the piece, um, I try to keep, is my arm pressing on it? I don't think it is. It's a tiniest bit. I'm actually lifting it up a tiny bit. So it's not pressing on there. Um, other question, favorite brand of underlays? Amico Velvets are my favorite. That's the way to go. Okay, I'm gonna carve some more so you guys can see an image. <laughs> see what we're doing. Again, just scratching the surface. And little pieces. Corey into the bowl. <laughs> uh, guys, I love this clay community. We help each other out. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. I mentioned earlier my my original university degree was in theater and speech education, so I'm I'm used to presenting a lot. I'm really not putting too much pressure as I'm making the image. Um, again, just scratching. With you, if you use, again, if you're not using dry porcelain like I'm doing right now, and you're using a leather hard um, clay body, um, you could probably be even more delicate if you want finer lines. Um, yes, Vicky's. Oh, um, I, I use the same tools. Um, I might use, I might not use the thin, thin needle. I'll probably, I usually stick to kind of my thicker needle tool. It's not really a huge, oh, it's a pretty big difference. You can see how thin this is compared to this. Um, I also use more of these circular piece, pieces. Um, so it makes, I can't make as many thin lines on those on other clay bodies or leather hard bodies. Um, but I'm a big fan of Kemper tools. They make really good quality carving tools. So plug for Kemper. Um, unless you figure out how to make your own. I don't know. Maybe that would be a cool class to teach. Is Not that I would know. But if someone else knows how to make your own sharp metal tools, send me a link. Okay. 
So because I want um, my image a little bit layered, and layered meaning like I want my snake and my flowers to overlap at certain phases. I'm taking a break from this flower. Um, So uh, Andrea, so I kind of uh, switch back and forth. So the reason I started with the flower is because it's going to be overlapping on the snake right here. So I started those petals and I'm gonna start on the snake body and see where it interacts with the petals so I can stop because uh, 10 minutes left. Thank you, Stacey. Um, yes, Renelle, if I did leather hard, but on the porcelain, I have not had a lot of success with leather hard porcelain carving. Um, I don't know why that is. If someone has insight into why carving leather hard porcelain is so tricky, I just find it really difficult. And I don't know if it's because of this clay body that I use, which is, um, I guess the Miller 617. Um, it's a porcelain clay with ball and grolic. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't worked with a lot of other porcelains, but the porcelains I have used, um, just don't respond well to being touched after um, at the leather hard phase. I don't know, maybe it's me, maybe it's some other qualities of the porcelain. So I wait till it's bone dry before I start to carve it. Um, yes, definitely less dust. Kemper tool, cool. Yeah, the time did fly by. I was like, whoa, we're almost done. So we'll, we'll go to 1115, I'll try to get, um, at least the main part of this image done and keep answering your guys' questions. Thank you, Stacy. Guys, isn't Stacy the best? Thank you so much for organizing this. This has been awesome. And honestly, it gives me a lot more confidence in teaching classes like online in general. I knew you guys would be the most receptive because you're all potters, but in terms of teaching, you know, new and really beginner potters that are like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, how many, uh, Thixotropic. I did not know that. Thixotropic, I'm gonna have to research that more. Um, I do two to three coats of underglaze, Molly. Yeah, Stacy's the best. Okay, coming back for the flower real quick. It feels leather hard when it is not quite there. Yeah. How do you glaze? Brush, spray, or dip? I brush it on. Um, I've no. I I don't dip the. Or are you glaze? Oh, how do you glaze? In terms of the under glaze, I brush it on. If I'm doing a clear glaze on top of it, I have a small studio space, so I have to just brush it on. I don't have room for big buckets of glaze to be anywhere. Um. Yes. <laughs> Janet, did that answer your question? How do you how do you glaze in terms of underglaze? I use brush. Um, I I brush for the clear for glaze firings too, but for the underglaze, um, if you you couldn't dip it because you'd be adding too much water and stress back into the clay body, it would just fall apart. Um, so brushing it on reintroduces the water back into the clay surface, and again you wait between each coats for it to dry completely, so you're not stressing it out a ton. Um, as you're brushing too, you may notice it starts to get a little charcoal-y. Um, 
Diamond Tor. Diamond Tor cools. Um, yes. So I have another friend who um, does Scurfito on porcelain. I call her friend, but it's just someone I follow on Instagram. Do you guys ever do that? <laughs> She's my friend. Uh, we're actually just friends on Instagram. Um, she uses a diamond core tool. It almost looks like the end of a Dremel. Um, and I think it's made with like a, like the, that di the diamond core, the diamond uh, tools. So um, how do I make more dramatic textures, just wider tool? Yes. So I will start with the finest line possible and then go thicker from there. Um, Cause if I were to come at this with um, like a thicker tool like that, or even, you know, a tool that much wider than this, you're gonna stress the surface out a bit. Um, it almost creates kind of a st not stratosphere. What's the right, like, you know, sedimentary rock, how it's like layers, layers, layers. That's kind of what's happened here. There's the clay surface and then the layers of underglaze. Um, if you're carving too deeply or too harshly, you're not giving those layers a chance to adhere um, and, and stick together. And that's what the first firing does is it kind of keeps it all together, right? Um, I have problems with clear going milky. Um, Janet, what, what clear do you use? I actually use a Mako. It's just a Mako, I think, zinc-free clear. Um, if you use, I have a satin mat. I think it's called satin mat. Let me check real quick, actually. Because the Amico clear satin glaze, this is what it looks like when I fire it over black. It turns blue. It turns blue and it looks really interesting and cool. And it's cool. Um, but these ones, see like the contrast. This is like blue. This was with black underglaze versus this had just the... Um, Mako clear. So I'm not sure. You kind of have to experiment, right? Um, sorry, you do scraffito on leather hard stoneware. Yes. And it's more carving than scratching. Right. Curious if the method of scratching on bone dry stoneware will work. I have not carved um, bone dry stoneware before. I just, uh, I, I assumed it, it wouldn't work. Like it wouldn't give way, I think, to your tools. And I think you have a higher chance of actually damaging your tools, especially if there's like a high grog or high amount of grog in your clay body. Um, the porcelain's very, very fine and, um, and yields to the carving process when it's dry a lot more. Um, and I just, I like the white of it and I think I can get finer lines too with it as well um oh yes the cloudiness so you can see it's starting to get cloudy up here and then it's still pretty dark over here um the only thing i do to reduce that is just brush it all over over and over and over and over again do not reintroduce water or anything i will just brush it and brush it and brush it and it will actually kind of look gray when you're all done. But by the time it fires, um, it's gonna still have that nice bright, or sorry, the, uh, the intense contrast that you are wanting um, when you use the jet black. I don't know if it's different with the velour black. Um, yeah, clear can get milky if too thick. It works well in BMX, no grog. Cool. Okay. I hope that answered your guys' questions. Sorry, oh, you're all asking the questions at the same time. Yes, sweetheart? Um, can it wait? Can you give me five minutes? Really important. Can you wait five minutes? Thank you. All right, that was my seven-year-old. I think their movie's over. It's okay, we're almost done. Stacy, how are we on time? Tony Hansen. I'll, I'll look at that up. Um, Pauletta? Pauletta, are you from Italy? Or is that a Portuguese name? Or Spanish, and I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yes. Stacy. <laughs> now, my boys are so sweet. They just, uh... Mommy, it's so important. You need to talk right now. I'm like, no, I don't think it is that important right now, but it's okay. It's probably about his bearded dragon or something. 
Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, see the image we're creating here? So I will actually go back over, see these thin lines over here with my, where's my thick needle tool? Oh, here it is, sorry. <laughs> my thicker needle tool to kind of make the lines more bold and leave these really, really thin lines. Um, 15 more minutes, awesome. Awesome, Pauletta. Hope Canada's treating you well. Boys, do you want to come say hi real quick? Yes. Yeah. Okay, my boys are going to come say hi real quick. Okay, come say hi over here. Say hi. Hi. Griffin, do you want to come say hi real quick? Just stand right here. Hi. Say hi. hi. <laughs> uh, I know Hannah, right? <laughs> It's fun. I'll be done in just a few minutes, okay? Okay. Thank you. They're so sweet. They know mommy's working. I'm just glad they're not like trying to kill each other right now. <laughs> the past few days have been rough with the quarantine. Oh. Thank you, Corey. And thanks so much for your suggestions. They sure are cute, huh? I think I'll keep them. <laughs> just kidding. That's terrible to say. Okay. Um, any other questions for me about uh, the Scraffito process? Um, I'm going to finish carving the outline of the snake and then I will just answer questions for you guys, okay? And we can chat for a bit. Um, I'd love to hear any other experiences you have with Scraffito or if you need more explanation on how this process works with like leather hard clay or any other kind of clay body. Um, I know only have one and yes, you know, I think cloth masks would work really well, um, to protect from the clay. Yeah. Wearing the mask, it feels, <laughs> it almost feels like bougie, right? Like you're like, wow, I have this piece that probably should give to like healthcare workers. And I am, I'm going to be donating almost all my masks and just reuse this one that I have right here because I... I never would have thought, like, purchasing these a few months ago, um, that there would be such a demand. You just, you know, I'm sure we've all felt that way with the pandemic. I had no idea it was going to be as intense as it has been. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Yes, Patty, thank you. Thank you, guys. It's been really, really awesome. Okay, we'll stop here, and I'll keep answering your guys' question. Okay. So, you can see how this process would take a while, right? And I, I tend to be a little um, particular about how my images look too. So, that's all we got done for today. <laughs> it's a lot, right? Just in that hour. Um, so, actually, we're working with standard 551. It is a bit tricky. Um, is that a, Shelly, is that a porcelain clay? Or is it something else? Sorry, let me take these off. Okay. Curious how you get the texture in the white area. Um, so yeah, so I I just carve each of the scales. Um, if you want to add color to it, I would just carve the entire snake body white. So no scales, nothing at first. And then I added, this is um, Amico Avocado. Add that onto the snake body and then carve again over after it dries. So that's how I got the texture. So um, there's, there's carving texture from when I carved it down to the white clay. Um, and then there's texture from the scales that I carved over after adding the green underglaze. Hope that makes sense. Does any residual porcelain dust affect the finished look? Um, I just try to make sure the whole piece has a consistent shade. So it's not, it's not gonna be dark black anymore. At this point, mine's almost like charcoal gray because of all the fine dust. When it fires, it comes out dark. So um, if you have like a bunch left over, just, just keep brushing it. Um, you may even try like taking um, like a blow dryer to it if it's bothering you. Um, but for the most part, as you're brushing, you're just gonna get kind of a chalky look. And it's okay, I haven't, I haven't noticed um, it changing the way it fires still comes out dark black. 
So sorry if I'm missing questions. So underglaze is applied to greenware and then is misfired. Yes. Then I add a clear glaze. Yep. Um, and I fire, this is all um, mid-range, so cone 5-6 stuff. So I just do bisque at 04, um, and then a cone firing at cone 6. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Amelia. Yeah. Do you wash the bisque before you glaze? Yes, I do. I submerge the whole thing in water and then I'll use a sponge and wipe it off. And then I let it dry all the way before I add um, glaze. That's a great question, Betsy. Using the needle tool to carve away the underglaze on the entire snake body? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. So if I'm doing this, if I'm wanting to do, you know, down to the white and then add another layer, I will, um, which one is it? I'll use one of these XCM tools. They're basically like dental tools. It has like a round top. Um, a round top. There's one that's like round and tipped too. And I'll carve with that. It's pretty um, tedious. So if you plan ahead, you can uh, just glaze black around the, the, the snake and not have to carve the whole thing. But I do enjoy carving it because it adds a great amount of texture underneath the scales on top of it. I don't know if you guys can see. There's just you know, a little more texture versus just the smooth um, black over here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, Tammy, Renee. This has been really fun. Thank you. I, I would love to see um, if you guys end up doing this process, I'd love to see what you come up with and how it works. Do my hands hurt? Yes. I have to stretch a lot so I actually have um, wrist problems in this one so we do a lot of just stretching and if it's a larger piece um, this piece probably took two or three days because I needed to take breaks you got to listen to your body when you're working with ceramics right um, if you're starting to hurt too much rather than force yourself to get an injury take a break stretch drink lots of water um, and go do something else and then you can come back to it rather rather than push through the pain and possibly make mistakes too. Um, thank you, Cecilia, Allison, Vicky, you guys are great. I will post the finished piece, yeah, if I get a chance. It's um, It's been tricky to find time to work in my studio, honestly, with the, uh, with the current quarantine. My kids um, still need quite a lot of attention. I was lucky to get a full hour without them interrupting every five minutes. But as soon as it's done, I'll be sure to post it. Yeah, I would love to see if anyone experiments with this or if you're on Clay Buddies, um, send me a message or comment and I'll feel free to answer, or I'll be sure to answer your questions. Yeah, I love hearing about other people's um, experiences too with Scraffito, because it, like all things in Clay, it seems like everyone does everything a little bit different, right? And this is purely my process. Um, not like, oh, it's just me. I'm the only one doing this. I just haven't seen a lot of other artists do this process. So I wanted to share, hopefully give you guys a chance to try something new. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you say you tried it. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Stacy. They're, they're so sweet and they're so helpful and good. Hi, Anne. What part of Florida are you in? Oh, South Florida. Nice. I'm in Northeast. Painter turned potter. I, I do still paint. If you look behind me, I have my easel back there. Um, I do oils and acrylics right now and occasionally watercolor, but um, it's sometimes hard to switch back and forth. Like my mind wants to be squeezing and pushing and working with the clay so much that getting back and just working with the paintbrush almost feels um, tiring sometimes. I don't know, I have to be in the right mood. Awesome, Kathleen, I'd love to see what you make. Thanks so much for tuning in, Corey. Your, your um, comments were awesome. They were really helpful. Okay, I'm gonna actually, okay. Again, on the clay uh, tools, Kemper. Yeah, everyone stay safe right now, please. Needle tools.
Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, I'll be sure to next time I'm carving or maybe next time I'm hand building stuff with the porcelain, I'll be sure to post. Um, awesome. Yes, Karen, different thought process. Yeah, and just like getting things, getting my ideas on the canvas feels completely different than when I do it in clay. I don't know why. It's just different, that's fine. Oil. Oils have that same feel as clay. I struggle with oils, Anne. I'm originally a watercolor artist, but oils just give me a run for my money. I think I'm just, I just don't know enough yet. And that's, that's fine. I love the process and I love learning. It's just like, it's a great thing to challenge myself. Hi from Finland, Santa. Yes. Yeah, we'll be, um, Stacy, me, do I post this back on Clay Buddies? I save it and then I post it again. And then I'll post it on my personal page too. Yeah. Hey, just, just a few more minutes to answer any questions you guys have, okay? I'm gonna log off at 11.15. Thanks, Veronica. Thanks, Beth. You guys are so great. It's like I have all these new friends that I don't even know what you look like. <laughs> Joni, my Instagram, um, my Instagram is just my name. It's just Jamie Mateer Art. I will post um, like my website information, my Instagram, and my Facebook link um, when I uh, share this again, the the like the finished video afterwards. Thanks, thanks, Julianne Joyce. Hi from South Dakota. Drilled wine corks with a hole poked through a new hand. That's so fun. Finish and then save. Awesome. Perfect. Because I was, I'm going to post this on my Instagram and my personal page as well. I'm just not sure what the process is. You guys are really awesome. Because this is my first live video. It's been really fun. Yeah, I'll just show you guys what we worked on today. Wow. So cool. I'll be sure to post the finished piece. Joni, this has been so great. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. I'm excited to see what other, um, watch the other presenters today. I love surface decoration. It's so fun. North Carolina. I have family out in Raleigh. Really, really beautiful area. We lived in in Jacksonville over at Camp Lejeune for about a month. My husband was working at the Marine base out there. So. Okay, I'll finish, save, and then share. Okay, I am going to check out now, guys. You have point... 0.5 seconds to <laughs> share with me. Thank you, Leslie. Any last questions before I log out? I'll show you again the creme de la creme of my stuff, the moon phases. This took two to three days to carve. Feel free to message me with any questions you have. Um, Again, I, I do not claim expertise on anything. I just really love this art form and uh, love working in it, love Scarfito, love clay, and love learning from all of you guys as well. So thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much for all your comments. Um, you make me feel like a superstar, but let's keep interacting. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day.